Hey, Paleo Joe here. Um, during this time when we're uh, a little bit stressed, I'm going to be doing some uh, Facebook posts and some videos that you can have uh, have your kids watch to show the kids. They're going to be kind of kid-friendly videos. If you want to see a lot more videos, if you go to my uh, Paleo Joe uh, site, uh, Facebook site, go back through the history, you'll see lots of other videos on crinoids, uh, trilobites, all kinds of prehistoric creatures. Um, I also have uploaded a lot of those to my uh, YouTube page, uh, Paleo Joe uh, YouTube page, so you can look at them there. But uh, take a few minutes and look through this, and if you think it's worthy enough, go ahead and get, gather the kids around and have them come down and, uh, and watch this video. Kind of a little bit of uh, uh, ancient uh, paleontological history. Most of what I've done uh, in my life, uh, as far as paleontology goes, is study the Devonian period. The Devonian period was a time in Earth's history when we were uh, covered by lots and lots of ocean. Uh, Pangaea had been starting to break up. The, uh, the Earth was under a, a great deal of change. And the Earth is something we call a very dynamic place. It's always moving and shifting and changing. If you think about it, volcanoes are, are going up all over the world. Uh, we've got earthquakes. There are floods. Uh, when there's a flood, the rivers change their course. The, uh, the seashores are changed by the action of wind and rain and waves and hurricanes. So the earth is a very dynamic place. It's always moving and shifting and changing. The Devonian period was a period of our Earth's history about 419 million years ago to about 358 million years ago. I'm, 60, I'm almost 65, so think about 65 years old. Then think about 365 years old. Then think about 300 million years ago, 365 million years ago. It was a very long time. So the Earth is always undergoing all these changes. Many parts of the United States and other parts of the world were underwater during that time. And here in Michigan, we were underwater. We were a warm, shallow, saltwater tropical sea. Wait a minute. Um, it snows here in Michigan. How could we have been a warm, shallow, saltwater tropical sea? It's because of that very dynamic Earth. Uh, we were once located down by the equator, down where it's very warm. So we were once a warm, shallow, tropical sea. Paleo Joe, how do you know we were a warm, tropical sea? Well, the reason is we find lots of corals. I wasn't there back then, but I find a lot of corals. Corals only grow in warm, shallow, saltwater, tropical seas. That's the only place on Earth they grow. If you guys remember watching a, a movie called Finding Nemo, Nemo is a clownfish, and he likes to swim through the tentacles of a creature called a sea anemone, or even corals. So this coral, this one is a horn coral. It's a solitary coral. It grows by itself on the bottom of the ocean. The top of this coral is round. Inside the top of that coral, there are feathered tentacles that stick up in the water. That's how this creature would eat. It would actually capture little food particles that, that are floating through the water. It also had another creature that lived with it. It's called symbiosis. It had an algae that lived inside the coral as well. Well, algae only grows where there's sunlight. So corals only grew in shallow tropical seas. The only place on earth you can find corals is in warm, shallow, saltwater tropical seas. I find these corals here in Michigan. That tells me at one time we were at the bottom of a shallow saltwater tropical sea full of lots of lagoons in very shallow water. This is a solitary coral. It grows by itself. Just one grows on the bottom of the ocean. But we also have something called a colony coral, a colonial coral. This is another type of coral. Again, they're round. Uh, inside each one of these little depressions was a tiny little creature. Had those little tentacles that stuck up in the water. These are colonial corals. They grew together in bunches. We have lots and lots of different kinds of species. Here in Michigan, there's one called a Petoskey stone. It's a coral. It's called hexagonary coral. It's not a Petoskey stone until you slice it and polish it and charge people lots of money for it. Then it's a Petoskey stone. In its natural form, it's a hexagonary coral. This one's not a hex. This one's something very similar. Um, I've got some hexagonary corals buried in uh, boxes there somewhere. I'm not quite sure. But anyway, um, we were at the bottom of a shallow tropical sea. We've got lots of storms that happen in warm, shallow, saltwater, tropical seas. They're called hurricanes. And when a hurricane comes across the water, it doesn't just stay on top of the water. It churns up the water. It makes the water really messy, really dirty, and it churns up the bottom of the water, too, as it's coming close to shore. But a hurricane doesn't just stay on the shore or stay on the, stay on the water. It hits the shoreline. It goes inland. 
And when the hurricane goes inland, it takes all that dirt and mud and sediment and clay and washes it out into rivers, washes it back out into the lagoons and into the oceans. This is a perfect example of something that happened back then, 365 million years ago. This is a horned coral. Now, I told you horned corals grow, you know, straight up from the bottom of the ocean. So this one actually was growing like this. It was growing up towards the, the sunlight where the, the, the top of the ocean was. But then something happened. Then there was a storm. A hurricane came. The hurricane was a really big hurricane. Lots of water, lots of tidal flow. And all of a sudden it knocked over that coral down onto the bottom of the ocean. But the coral did not die. The coral was just barely buried a little bit and it stayed alive. And all of a sudden it started growing back up to the surface of the water. So this shows beautifully how violent the ocean was back then. The coral was growing like this, happy. All of a sudden, here comes a hurricane and knocked it over. But it did not die. It kept growing with this pointing back up to the surface of the water. Now, I really like the Devonian period. Um, most of the time when I was in New York, I collected lots of seashells. Seashells in New York, yep, they're called brachiopods. This is an example of one of the brachiopods. This is a seashell that I found. This is an atripa. Uh, it's very very flat on the bottom and very bumpy on the top. This is just an example of one of the seashells. Again, we were at the bottom of a warm, shallow, saltwater tropical sea, so lots of seashells. No human beings back then to walk along and pick up seashells and put them in their pockets. So these things would actually get washed up onto beaches, into shallow lagoons, nobody there to pick them up, and they would get uh, uh, buried, and then they would begin the fossilization process. Lots of other creatures that were around back then. One of the creatures that uh, really made the Devonian period was called fish. We had fish back then. The Devonian was actually so full of fish that we called the Devonian the age of fish. Back then the fish were placoderms. They had hard armor plates on the outside of the body. And lately I've been doing a lot of research on fish. I've been finding a lot of fish up north in the Alpena area. And I've been finding those, those uh, hard armor plates. We had lots of other creatures back then, and one of my favorites, actually one of the favorites that I've ever found and uh, ever collected and studied, are called trilobites. We had trilobites going all the way back to the Cambrian period. You guys can Google the different periods of the Earth and find out how long ago the Cambrian was, about 500 million years ago. Well, one of my favorites is something called a trilobite. This is a trilobite. A lot of people call these things uh, roly-polies of the ocean, uh, butterflies of the sea. These are creatures that lived on the bottom of the ocean. They're kind of like roly-polies. They'd roll themselves up into a little ball for protection from danger. They were made up of basically three body segments. They are made up with a body segment uh, going right down the middle like this. It's the central or axial lobe. Then it's got a pleural lobe on either side of the axial lobe. So that's kind of how it got its name, trilobite, three lobes. Tri, Latin for three. It's got three lobes. But it also is divided three ways horizontally. It's divided into the head section. We call that the cephalon. The body section right here, we call that the thorax. And the tail section down here called the pygidium. Now, trilobites ranged in size from, boy, even smaller than an eighth of an inch to over two feet long. Lots of different kinds of species, and that's kind of why I like trilobites a lot. Um, there's all different kinds of species all over the world. We find them kind of everywhere, every continent in the world. So trilobites is another creature that uh, we find in Devonian period. We find them through the Cambrian all the way up to the Permian, but we do find a lot of trilobites in the Devonian period. One other thing I found way up north, up near Rogers City, is we back then we had uh, snails. Some of the snails got to be pretty big. Uh, this is an example, oh my gosh, of Amphiloceros manitobensis, kind of a fu funny name for a snail. Found this guy many, many years ago. Uh, you can see this beautiful shape right here, nice coil shape. This is a snail I found up near Rogers City. I didn't take it out of the rock. Um, really, there's no reason to. This is just beautiful the way it is. It's got a little bit of calcite crystals on the side here. This is actually the internal mold, the inside of the snail. The outside shell, it's long gone. It's, it's, it's been weathered away. But uh, this is an impression of the inside of the snail. Really a good, a good fossil. So really, 
We've got all kinds of fossils we can find all over the country. Uh, here in, in, in Michigan, we've got a lot of Devonian exposures. Uh, we've got some in New York near Buffalo. I go there every year for a, a dig we call Dig with the Experts, where we find lots and lots of trilobites. We also find some seashells there and some corals. There's a great place down in Oklahoma where we find lots of Devonian uh, fossils. Again, trilobites, those are kind of my favorite. So there are places around the world. Morocco has got a great location for uh, Devonian, um, Devonian fossils. Uh, in Germany, uh, there's some great locations for some Devonian fossils. So we really find those. Again, the Devonian period was a period when we were, we, North America, was down by the equator. Um, and we were a warm, shallow saltwater tropical sea. Again, evidenced by finding all these giant corals uh, showing us that we were once a shallow saltwater tropical sea. The Earth, again, is a very dynamic place. It's always moving, shifting, and changing. There's always so much more to learn. Now, you may not like fossils. You might like butterflies. Whatever you like, grab a book, go to the computer, Google what you like, because there's always something new to discover. I think I might have found a brand new fish species up in Alpena a couple years ago. I'm doing research right now trying to find out if it actually is a brand new species. There's always something new to discover. If you like butterflies, read a book on butterflies. Go out into nature and look at butterflies. You might be the one who discovers something really cool about butterflies. You may not like butterflies. You might like mathematics. If you like mathematics, there's always something to do in mathematics. We really need to learn a lot about math. I wasn't that good in math, and I wish I was a lot better because I use mathematics all the time in paleontology. No matter what you like to do, get a book about it. Read as much as you can about it. Go outside into nature. Right now, it's a little bit more difficult. We want to try to stay away from other people because of what's happening in the world today. But if you can, get out into nature and look at things. Look at the leaves. I started off when I was a little boy, about, about 10 years old, I collected all kinds of things. I collected leaves off the trees, and I pressed them between the pages of a book. And I dried them, and I looked at them. I did the same thing with flowers. I collected bird feathers that were laying on the ground. I collected rocks and minerals. I collected all kinds of things. I collected butterflies and insects, and I put the little pins in them, and I labeled them, and I put them in little boxes. My room in New York, where I grew up, looked like a little museum. I had shoe boxes all over my room with different kinds of collections and those things. The one thing that I found that really intrigued me, made me very happy to find, were these things called fossils. And I started collecting fossils way back then. So again, now we're sitting inside. We're kind of bored. There's, there's no school. Uh, get out there and read as much as you can and learn and study. And again, if you've got access to a computer, the computer opens up a brand new world for you. Just Google whatever you like and learn as much as you can about it. I'll be posting videos like this from time to time uh, during the next couple of weeks. Again, if you're interested in some of my other Facebook videos, go to my Facebook page and go back into my history. You'll see a lot of videos there. Also, check out my YouTube channel, Paleo Joe. Um, and if you'd like to, follow me on Facebook, like me on Facebook and follow, and you'll see over the next couple of weeks I'm posting a fossil of the day every day so you guys can learn a little bit more about fossils that we find here um, in the United States and around the world. So y'all take care. Enjoy this time together. Share this time together. Get out into nature. Look at how beautiful nature is. Learn, study, and research. Learn as much as you can. Y'all take care. Till next time. Bye-bye.